Fighting the same enemies all the time can get a little boring, but imagine getting into a fight with a bunch of super mutants and then out of nowhere a chimpanzee dressed like a ninja jumps out of the bushes and kicks you right in the butt crack. That would be exciting and scary. Now every time you got in a fight you would shit a little thinking there's a crack kicking champ hiding in the bushes somewhere. This mod does basically that minus the chimp that knows ninjutsu, although that would be a truly amazing mod. With this mod installed pretty much anywhere you go in the game, there's a chance you'll be attacked by these new random enemies. Which is more terrifying than that one time I was on a plane and the pilot came on the overhead speaker with an urgent announcement. Uh, attention all passengers, this is uh, your captain speaking. Uh, we have uh, handed out knives to all the uh, stewardesses and they will uh, be going around now stabbing or randomly selected third class passengers. Uh, thank you for flying United Airlines. This mod adds a bunch of new enemies to the game to really spice things up on the battlefield. There are new tech raiders, federals, long oarsmen, renegades, metal men, scrappers, pirates, and reavers. They are all very immersive and fit into the game really well. They add a new dynamic to the commonwealth which really keeps things interesting in regards to the encounters that you will face in your travels of the world space. This mod uses unique level lists that will spawn these new enemies in places that would otherwise not be populated, which makes this mod even better. Also, all these new NPCs are hostile, so don't try to talk things out, because they will actually hit you right in the mouth. I rate this mod one seal who's really bad at telling secrets. I jerked off in the storage closet! Don't tell anyone, okay? Now I know what some of you may be thinking. Wait just one hairy coconut baiters. Terminators aren't really all that scary or spooky. To that I say this, if your name was Sarah Connor in the early 1980s, then you were likely pretty frightened. Just imagine a juiced up Arnold busting through your door with a f***ing magnum trying to blow your face off. That's a pretty horrific scene. Did you ever notice that people always run away from villains in these horror movies? Now, I might not be a marine dermatologist, but if a lunatic was chasing me with murder in their eyes, I'd just stand perfectly still. You know, treat them like the T-Rex in Jurassic Park. Try to get in their blind spot and shit. Yeah, there's a 98% chance I get stabbed repeatedly, but if it worked, I'd be a genius! See, people always sprint away from these guys. So maybe, just maybe, murderers wouldn't be expecting the whole standstill thing. So if you just meander off slowly, they wouldn't know what to think. Well, he's stabbing all the other panicking people, you can just slip out of there, like you showed up to the wrong party. Oops! This mod retextures all the synths in the game to make them look more like Terminators rather than synths. They have metallic frames and even optional red eyes like Arnold himself in the 1980s. Now there are 8 variants to choose from while you're installing this mod, including Burned, Chrome, Shiny Chrome, Dark Clean, Dark Dirty, which sounds kinda sexy, Steel Clean, Steel Dirty, and Steel Dirty with skin pieces. Sounds kinda messy. Rather than take away from immersion, I feel that this mod just makes the world more immersive and terrifying making you believe that synths are really a force to be avoided on a regular basis. This is an excellent mod that makes fighting synths a more terrifying dynamic in Fallout 4. I rate this mod one weird golf instructor who makes everything progressively more awkward. Oh, what do you got there? Quite a little tricky putt, eh? Now why don't you go ahead and put your balls in that hole over there, yeah? God, you smell nice. Dude, what the f***? Boundaries, bro! Boundaries! Good God! Pilgrim is a horror overhaul for Fallout 4 created from the ground up by Looping and Trey M. The creators of other popular EMBs called Photorealistic Commonwealth and Cinematic Film Looks. This mod takes much of its inspiration from the atmosphere and weather seen in the American horror film The Witch. This mod will make Fallout 4 a truly horrific looking experience. I can honestly say I haven't been this frightened since little Billy got out of his cage and ran off to the authorities. I honestly didn't think a three-year-old could chew through a four-inch thick metal chain. Boy, that kid was determined. This mod doesn't just add a new terrifying look, no no. It adds new weather sounds and environment lighting that have been completely designed from scratch to bring realism to a dreadful atmosphere. A new camera emulation system has been designed as well, using a new tone mapping method that emulates the way digital cinema cameras capture footage on a film set. A new weather plugin has been created with this new tone mapping method as well, 
and is tightly integrated with this ENB, so I highly recommend you install that as well. The ENB features lens emulation, film grain, adjustable letterboxing, optional sharpening, and lift shadows function that can be disabled for deeper shadows. Now if you're like me and you have no clue what any of that means, just know that it means the world space will be more realistic and scary. All the features are optional so you can switch them on or off depending on your preference. Furthermore, the performance is quite good, dropping only 5 to 6 frames per second on average and only 10 to 12 frames per second in cities on a single GTX 970 at 1080p. Two extra presets of the ENB with lower quality settings have been created as well for weaker systems. This is an absolutely excellent addition to Fallout 4, one that will truly change the way you look at and play through the world of Fallout. I rate this mod one guy who sniffed one too many magic markers. Guys, come on, be honest. Do you like my hat? This mod adds Tony's super original friend War Machine to the world space. This isn't just an outfit, no, no. This actually looks and feels like a real suit of armor because it's a power armor in the game. So that means you can get in and out of it the cool superhero way. This armor has a lot of customization options as well, so you can change up the look and feel. You can choose between four different paint jobs, which look fantastic, and make me wish I was a super smart billionaire so I'd be able to upgrade from that red leather into something a little more metal. Now if you don't like the War Machine look, then you can always go with the Iron Man look instead. Albeit this suit is a little beefier than Tony's original design, and it definitely looks a lot stronger too. But I'll be the judge of that. Yeah, it looks strong, but can it take a flying spin kick from a trained special ops expert? Get ready, big boy, because a storm's about to come for you. Yeah, it's solid. I'm sold. I'm sold. You can also upgrade the booties so they have little jetpacks on them so you can fly around. This will allow you to drop in on your enemies from anywhere and have a wicked superhero landing. I mean, the superhero landing alone is worth the upgrade. He also has a machine gun mounted on his shoulder, which looks cool but does nothing. It's like the Peter Jason Quill of machine guns. Now if you want to acquire this armor, then just head over to the Atomatoys factory. It will be in a cage on the roof. Why lock up a suit of armor with nobody in it? Who knows? But I do know this, it's not going anywhere, so head on over and grab it. I rate this mod one baby who's terrible at pretending to be a teddy bear. I mean, come on, the face is all wrong. It's not even close. Now this mod gives my boy Valentine a much needed makeover in the game. Before this mod, Valentine really didn't have much going for him in the looks department. His clothing was lacking any discernible detail and it looked all fuzzy and out of focus all the time, which confused me because I was like, how is this fucking guy out of focus? He's standing right in front of me. His skin also looked really weird, like an old wrinkly ball sack, but not like the ball sack of a normal old person, like the old wrinkly ball sack of a 10,000 year old wizard or something, you know? His metal skeleton also lacked any real details and instead looked flimsy, like it was made out of plastic. He honestly looked like an old toy robot that was made out of recycled crayons. It was despicable. However, this mod takes all that and totally reworks it. It makes Valentine look so, so much better. He's now got high detailed textures and meshes all over his titanium nipples. His clothing now looks real and has detail right down to the stitching. The buttons actually look like buttons now rather than circular blobs on his coat. His tie now looks like a tie rather than some scuzzy Play-Doh tied in a knot around his neck. His steel frame also looks so much better. It really gives you the impression he could take a couple arrows to the knee and still be an adventurer if you know what I mean. As well, his eyes also got a makeover. Now they're a bluish white and way more detailed rather than that urine yellow from before and all out of focus. He just looks so much better, you know? He really does. We really fluffed up his speed dating grade, that's for sure. There's no question. He's definitely gonna wield the dames now. To me, this is just a must-have mod to anyone who wants to interact with Valentine in Fallout 4. I highly recommend it. I rate this mod one photo of when she asked how long it is. It's this long! Right here. There it is. That long. Fallout is a great game that lets you roleplay as pretty much anyone you want to be in a world space that reacts to your choices. Time also moves forward as you play through the game. Play it long enough and the months and years will actually change. However, the seasons won't change at all, which can really kill immersion. Yes, nukes went off and bodied 90% of humanity, but Boston's still gonna get a few inches of snow in them chilly months. 
However, with this mod installed, you won't have to sacrifice immersion during the different seasons of the year. You'll be able to switch between all four seasons as you play through the game. Each season having its own distinct design and feel in the game. Summer will give you a sweaty bum crack. Fall is colorful, but will be sure to wake up your nips. Winter is colder than Elsa's tears, and spring is blooming and bursting with new plant life. It's like a regular orgy of emotions no matter what the season. I love it. Changing the environment can have a huge effect on your playthrough of the game. As we all know, aesthetic changes can be a big deal. For instance, I naturally have pretty curly hair. So sometimes, I like to use a flat iron and straighten it, which I think makes it look really nice. But all my girlfriend can say is stop straightening your pubes with my stuff. Boundaries or whatever. Needless to say, straightening my pubes is a game changer, just like this mod. So don't let yourself be trapped in one boring, unimmersive season ever again. Let your game grow and evolve with you as you play through the game. Now the only bummer is that the seasons don't change on their own. You're gonna have to do this manually. But it's still a huge step in the right direction for you immersive buffs out there. Oh yeah. I rate this mod one designated driver who might not be totally qualified. Okay, Sparkles. Get it home. Safe and sound. Now, it's no question that the Minuteman in Fallout 4 needed a makeover, okay? You know, the vanilla Minutemen look like a group of homeless mall cops or something. Their uniforms don't match, they look unorganized, and if I had to guess, I bet more than few of them are bedwetters. It's more common than you think. This mod changes all that and completely overhauls the Minutemen in Fallout 4, making them an actual force to be reckoned with. This mod will give them a military aesthetic and design. Now they'll look formidable and organized. They will now look and feel like a real faction in the Commonwealth. This mod adds over 15 modular military-themed items for the Minutemen, overhauling the faction with different classes and combat styles. Now you can choose to add just the cosmetics only, or you can install the leveled list version, which overhauls the faction completely. The items are distributed to different classes that are unlocked by leveling up from the very beginning to level 60. Some of these units being infantry, rangers, recon, cavalry, field medics, veterans, and so much more. This mod is sure to completely change the game in the sense that now you might actually respect the Minutemen during your playthrough of the game. I rate this mod the face you make when you're pretty sure you've seen a ghost. Well, I'm never sleeping again. As I'm sure you're all aware, darkness is the scariest thing ever invented. It's right ahead of prepubescent Asian girl ghosts and homeless people who get too close to you on the subway and start coughing in your f***ing face. This mod attempts to ameliorate that fear by adding a high-powered combat-style flashlight thingy to Fallout 4. So you can actually stop crying and shitting yourself in the dark like a little bitch and get out there and get things done when the sun goes down. Now this light is inspired by the shoulder light seen in the Alien movies. Which makes me wonder how I would react if I ever saw an alien in real life. I'd like to think that I'd be all calm, cool, and collective. I mean, this is a pretty cool cave. I could probably make a home for myself here. Oh my god, what the f*** is that? This baby has been added to the armored vendor leveled list, so you can purchase it off vendors, or if you don't want to buy it, you can craft it at the chem station under utility. It requires three copper, four glass, four adhesive, five steel, and five screws to craft this little bitch. There are also six craftable color lenses that can change up the style. It is compatible with NPCs, so you can put it on them, get them to model it for you. It also has dynamic shadows and volumetric light. It looks pretty cool, and it adds a new way to light your path when traveling the Commonwealth at night. I rate this mod what looks to be one bird trying to eat its own ass, but I can't tell for sure. Lighting is important. It can be the difference between a well-lit basement where kids go to play with dolls, and the basement in Silence of the Lambs where Buffalo Bill turned people into dolls. Would you f*** me? I'd f*** me. I'd f*** me hard me so hard. Lighting can do a lot in a video game. It can make real world items seem realistic, or it can even take you on a journey of your imagination, making something completely fictitious seem lifelike by design. To put it simply, lighting can be one of the most important aspects of any video game's environment in regards to setting the environment itself and entangling the immersive world in our playthroughs of the game.
Bethesda did a very good job setting the foundation for the lighting in the game. But when it comes to lighting, there is always room for improvement. This mod author was able to take that platform a step further and really make the interiors of the world of Fallout stand out in a way that almost completely changes the dynamic of the world. Lots of times when we look at lighting mods, it just feels like the mod author made the world darker and that's supposed to be more realistic. Now I understand that a world without lit buildings, street lights, or cities would be dark as f but to me that doesn't massage my boner. And not being able to see sh in a video game is not at the top of my to-do list. This mod makes the lighting more realistic, but doesn't just make it darker. It places the light in more realistic ways, still giving a decent amount of illumination to the point where it doesn't break immersion, but also places the light in such a way that further entangles you into the interior environments as you explore them. This mod is an enhancement to the interior vanilla lighting system, bringing you an enormous increase in shadow cast lights. Overall ambience have also been improved with the adjustments of many ambient non shadow cast lights. All interior cells have been worked on across the Commonwealth and in Far Harbor, as well as in Nuka World. Much effort has gone into keeping the performance reasonable and includes many levels with triggered lights to keep the performance running smoothly. Non DLC versions and separate Automatron plugins are available as well. I rate this mod one basketball technique that is underutilized. Oh, nowhere to go. Better do a spin and figure his butthole. Oh, damn. That is effective. Hockey masks are designed for two things. Stopping hockey pucks and scaring the bejesus out of camp counselors. Needless to say, the hockey mask in this mod hasn't even smelt a hockey rink. This mod adds the iconic hockey mask, machete, and outfit sported by the sociopath in the Friday the 13th movies. Jason Voorhees is basically Sloth from the Goonies, but with like no chill. He's also probably the worst goalie ever. He just leaves the net wide open while he's out gallivanting around perving on sexy co-eds who he later kills with his psycho strength. Maybe he's angry because he forgot to put on his goalie pads. I don't know about you guys, but have you ever been hit in the shin with a hockey puck? It hurts, okay? Could be the catalyst that sent him on a murder hunger rampage. Maybe, probably not though. This mod author did a great job adding Jason's outfit to the game in a very immersive way. Now you can roleplay as a serial murdering psycho freak without sacrificing immersion. This mod adds a high quality hockey mask and machete to the game with a little mini quest to acquire them. The mask, the outfit, the machete all look great in the game and definitely give you that Friday the 13th feel. In terms of customization options, there isn't a lot, but that's okay because Jason was kind of a one trick pony in terms of his wardrobe. I mean, he basically wore the same shit in every movie, it just got more tattered and disgusting. Honestly, he would just basically put on anything that would fit over his giant man nips and didn't interfere with his stabbing motions, you know? This mod is also about practicality, giving you what you need to get your Jason on without cluttering up your pit boy with a thousand different options. This is a great mod that's sure to make you feel evil as shit in the game. I rate this mod one face that screams, I'm guilty. So, here's the thing, uh, we no longer have a cat, she probably left. Diversity is important, it's important to try new things, change things up, you know, go with the flow. Which is why I no longer use physical violence against my enemies in Fallout 4. I found a way more effective technique. What I like to do is I like to mentally abuse them for years until eventually they hurt themselves. Hey now, words hurt baiters. Is that so? Try telling that to someone who's been hit in the face with a f***ing crowbar! I can't remember the last time I seen a detective standing over a murder scene saying, It's just what I thought. The suspect used a bombardment of hurtful verbs until the victim eventually cried himself to death. Put out a nationwide APB on the Webster Dictionary. That son of a bitch is behind this! I knew it! This mod adds diversity to the game and makes each synth you come across look like they have their own unique identity. Before this mod, all the synths had the same looks, weapons, and design. This mod aims to give every synth a unique look by using multiple retextures for every synth armor piece, weapon, and uniform, coursers included, in the game. This mod adds new diffuse, normal, specular, glow, and cube maps in 2 and 4K variants. Whatever the f*** that means. It sounds pretty sophisticated, which makes it awesome. The difference between this mod and other synth retextures is that instead of only using one texture option, this mod makes use of every retexture that is made. So instead of only having one armor set, there are now 70 different armor sets in different colors with different chrome and glow effects added to the synths that you encounter. This in combination with different synths, some with skin and some without and so forth and so on, combine that with the use of light, medium and heavy armor pieces and it makes every synth look unique. 
adding an unparalleled variety to the synths in the game. This mod adds 70 different looking armor pieces, 28 different looking helmets, 24 different looking uniforms, 2 different looking synth weapons, and 1 coarser retexture. I would highly recommend this mod to anyone who wants their synths to seem more realistic and way more badass. I rate this mod the one look you make when someone catches you jerking off. Oh damn! Play it cool. Play it cool. You didn't see nothing! Now zombies actually scare the sweet living bejesus out of me. There's just something about a lifeless titty twisting cannibal that just puts me on edge. Call me crazy. Now one of the things that is so frightening about a zombie apocalypse are the zombies themselves. There are really two types of zombies. There's the fastest f zombies like in 28 Days Later or in World War Z, which are terrifying and they just feel exhausting. I feel like there's no way I'd get away. They'd grab my leg, they'd snatch me up and they'd eat my f brain. Then there are the slow zombies like in The Walking Dead or Dawn of the Dead or movies like that, which I prefer because they feel like, hey, I want to eat you, but I can wait. I can wait. The ghouls in Fallout 4 are definitely not zombies. Now I know this because I have the internet. But they do share a lot of similar characteristics to that of a zombie, right? With their scuzzy hair, their funky faces, and their crappy slashed up clothing, they, they really look like zombies. And being as how Fallout is a post-apocalyptic setting, it really isn't that far-fetched to want to turn it into more of a zombie thriller. Now, if you have a great imagination, you can already kind of picture the ghouls as zombies, but they'd be the fast ones, and that's exhausting. So, if you want them to be slow and sh you're gonna need this mod to overhaul the zombies to make them act more like them slow sons of bitches we all know and love. This mod reduces the running speed of the ghouls in the game as well as eliminates their ability to sprint, dodge, or turn 180 degrees. The attack base damage though has been doubled, so now when they do catch you, they'll be even more of a threat. There's also a stagger effect that's been added as well that knocks you back when the f***ers hit you. This mod also changes the durability of the ghouls which makes them a lot tougher and harder to kill. Their spawn variety has also been affected so you'll see more types at once when they spawn in. Now there is also a configuration holotape that comes with this mod on so you can change it up depending on your preferences. You can set it up so it's headshot only mode, meaning that the zombies keep on coming until you shoot them right in their goddamn faces. I would highly recommend this mode as it makes the ghouls really feel like a threat as zombies rather than just slow moving ghouls. So you gotta remember when this setting is on, body shots they don't do shit. Nope, didn't hurt, didn't feel it, did not feel that. I think a mosquito bit me right on the butt cheek. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't feel that. Uh... Excuse me. Are you trying to hurt me right now? Are you Are you softly slapping me in the back? Because that's what it feels like. Nope, still nothing. No, didn't feel it. No, 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 no. Feeling good here. Can't hurt me. I'm pretty much invincible. Nope, didn't feel that either. Did not feel that one. Oh my god, that one, that one really hurt. That one really stung. That one got me. I mean, I'm just with you. I didn't, I didn't feel a thing. This mod really makes the ghouls feel a lot more like zombies than ghouls in the game, which can completely change your perspective of the world, making it feel a lot more like a zombie apocalypse than a nuclear fallout. This idea can be a lot of fun, as now the ghouls play a very different role in the game and become this whole new element to avoid when exploring the commonwealth. I rate this mod the face everyone makes when someone jams two fingers right up their butthole. Wow, really wasn't expecting that second one. It's kinda nice. Now for those of you who don't know, sunglasses are a form of protective eyewear designed primarily to prevent bright sunlight and high energy visible light from damaging or discomforting the eyes. They can also be used in combination with tight, loosely buttoned shirts and skinny jeans to make women want to touch your penis. The only thing cooler than these sunglasses are really sweet karate moves like these. Whatcha? Hiya! Hiya! Whatcha? Now before this mod, there were sunglasses in Fallout 4, sure. But let's face it, they look like shit, and it's unlikely that anyone wearing them would have an easy time making friends. This mod ameliorates that and adds the type of sunglasses and eyeglasses to the game that look like most other types of sunglasses and eyeglasses. But they're a thousand times more expensive, so they're definitely better. These glasses do look really nice, with high quality textures and meshes that make them look very realistic in this fictional environment. In fact, they look so real that it makes glasses in real life look fake, like fake glasses. Now these are the type of glasses that you'd be happy to wear not only in Fallout 4, but also in real life. They are loosely based off of real life brand name glasses called Ray-Bans, and they do a very good job encompassing the Ray-Ban style. 
I think it's safe to say that I'd wear these sunglasses in the dark and feel cool as f running into walls and shit. It'd be awesome. Now, if you want to acquire these glasses, which I'm sure you do, they can be found on vendors. More specifically, Fallon's Basement is one such vendor that is known for selling exotic items such as these. Furthermore, when you wear these sunglasses in first person, the sunglasses give off a lifelike screen tint for that realistic feel and sunlight protection. You just can't get any better than that. I rate this mod one bird who likes to flash all the other ducks. Look at me in all of my glory. Put your away, buddy. You're scaring my kids. Have you ever hit one of your settlers because they didn't look good? Do you ever smack them around because their scuzzy eyeballs make you madder than a bee's nest filled with cum? I know I have. Sometimes I don't even try to justify it. You think I like hitting you? Do you? Well, actually I do. Look, I made a list of my favorite things to do in hit and use number three, right under anal sex. Coincidence? I think not! Now, if you've ever said something like that to one of your settlers before, then this mod's probably for you. Now, you'll be able to stop trying to beat the ugly out of your settlers with this mod installed. This mod adds some beautiful eyeballs to the game that would make any 4 an 8 no problem. Eyeballs can say a lot about a person. For instance, a person who has no eyeballs, well, it says that that person likely can't see sh**. The eyes in Fallout 4, I mean, they're okay, but the real question you have to ask yourself is do they pop when you look at them? Because if I have to spend 18 to 2,000 hours staring at fictitious characters as I play through the story of a game that has partly taken over my life, then I want their f***ing eyes to pop right out of their goddamn skulls! Sorry, I get a little carried away when I talk about eyes. This mod does just that and adds some eyes to the game that really stand out and make you take notice. These eyes may not be the most realistic in terms of the bright colors used, but they do look awesome on your character and on the NPCs in the game. The blues look bluer, the greens look greener, and the purples look crazier than a person with purple f***ing eyes! Now when it comes to immersion, these eyes may not be the most immersive, I'll admit that in the sense that they exaggerate the color and brightness of your player's eyes in the game. However, they do so in such a way that looks fantastic and realistic. Put it this way, if eyes could ever be this bright and beautiful in real life, they would look just like these eyes. This mod adds 21 high-quality human eyes with improved eyelashes to the game that both have shorter and longer variants. I would highly recommend this mod to anyone who's really into eyeballs, as these balls here are pretty sweet. I rate this mod one haircut that went terribly, terribly wrong. Seriously, I said it a little off the top. Now I look f Now this mod adds a costume based on the Flash series to the Fallout 4 video game. It has all the goodies you're gonna need too to play pretend. It's got the suit, mask, gloves, even a belt. All of which can be crafted at the chemistry station, which I think is super convenient. Also, you can modify all the armor to give yourself super special speed powers. So you'll be, like, really, really fast. Just like the Flash himself. I mean, the Flash is super fast. Put it this way, if the Flash was a car, he would be, like, incredibly expensive and have a ton of buttons on his steering wheel. Honestly, I don't think I'd be able to afford him even with that Hollywood money because of my current financial situation. Let's just say my credit hasn't recovered ever since I made that poor investment decision. What can I say? That man is a salesman. Also, you can cook up some special drugs that will make time move slower, which makes the speed thing extra fun. But don't do drugs, kids. Drugs are for losers. Oh, yeah. That's the good stuff there. Oh, I'll be touching myself tonight. You'll also be able to acquire special knuckles and a ring that will make your combat faster and more palpable, meaning you'll send your enemies flying as if you were actually traveling and mind-boggling speeds. There's also some cool lighting effects which really sell it for me, and you can also opt to run on water, because the flash is so fast that gravity pays him no mind. Yeah, yeah, he might be fast, but let's see how he does under pressure. Hey, Flash! So you're really fast, are ya? Why don't you try this on for size? Rock! Paper! Drop! Guess you weren't fast enough, were ya? Let that be a lesson to you, kids. Speed isn't everything, and gun, gun always beats paper. I rate this mod that moment you realize that amusement park rides really aren't for you. This is too fast! This is just way too fast! Now this is a simple mod with a large effect in the game. This mod adds road flares that can be placed down whenever you need to add some light to a dark area. This mod adds to a spine-chilling atmosphere with its red overtone that leaves objects in the distance barely visible until they come into the light. 
What really adds this mod to this week's list is when you're traveling the Commonwealth at night. It can be unnerving to throw a road flare every few feet just to see what's up ahead. Then whenever something scary reveals itself from the dark, unforgiving Commonwealth, it's enough to make you poo in your adult onesie pajamas. Road flares, aside from adding to the ominous surroundings at night, also add to the game's immersion, giving the players a lore-friendly way to illuminate the Commonwealth at night without using mods to increase the light on the Pit-Boy or changing the gamma settings in their game. This mod is an entertaining addition of Fallout 4 that can really change how often you choose to travel at night. Either you enjoy it because you're brave as f or you avoid it like crazy and just start crying uncontrollably every time the sun goes down. I rate this mod one creepy tickling photograph. It's all fun and games until your weird Uncle Gary touches your penis. Now this mod adds the outfit the protagonist detective wears in the Evil Within video game to the Commonwealth. For those of you who don't know what the Evil Within is, it's actually a survival based horror game that's too terrifying to play alone or with the lights out. Have you ever been so scared that you try to get away but you can't get anywhere because you're panicking like a f***ing madman? Me, I f oh god, please don't, please oh f come on, man, oh, f Well that's how scared you feel after you play the Evil Within, put it that way. This game centers around Sebastian as he's pulled through a distorted world full of nightmarish locations and horrid creatures. Which sounds to me an awful lot like my last serious relationship and a night out with her f***ing friends. Nightmarish locations and horrid creatures. Now the evil within is the epitome of scary f***ing horror games. I mean, it's scarier than most horror movies. Not that all horror movies are scary. I mean, I didn't find the ring all that scary because the girl would call you up and warn you before she came to kill you. See, that's a very thoughtful serial killer. Let's you get all your shit together before she comes and twists up your fucking head. You know why these horror movies aren't that scary? It's because you always expect the killer to be there, right? The perfect serial killer is the one that gets you where you least expect it. If I were going to design a serial killer, I would make a serial killer that swims up the toilet bowl when you're having a sh**, spreads your ass cheeks apart, and just punches you in the butthole until you die. He would punch your sh** right back up into your asshole. That would be f terrifying. I'd never sh** again. That would be the end of me sh** Now this outfit just looks incredible and it has excellent textures and meshes too. If you want to get your hands on this great outfit, you can craft it at the chemistry station under its own category. This outfit is just an awesome addition to the game and one that can be enjoyed regardless of whether you wanted to add something scary or not. To me, this mod is immersive as it just adds an epic outfit for your character to wear around the commonwealth. I rate this mod one cat with a sh** ton of street cred. You need something, I'll get you. For the right price. Now this mod adds 106 pain styles for the T45, the T51, the T60, and the X01 power armors, as well as the jetpacks that correspond to each armor type. This mod also includes 100 decals and a complete power armor overhaul. Now this mod is a standalone and doesn't actually change the vanilla versions of the armor. Rather, it just adds more options to the armor when you're in the crafting section at the power armor station. So now you can really go ham with your creativity. With over 424 paint styles, colors, and variants to choose from, the possibilities are f***ing earth shattering. Now the one thing that I really like about this mod is the same thing that may cause others to dislike it. Now the paints all look really clean and well done as if they were just applied to the armor. Which to me makes a lot of sense and is immersive because when you paint something it can make it look as good as new, right? I mean I really like the look of the power armor when it's all shiny and new look and it just makes me f***ing happy. However some people do like a worn look on their power armor or just their characters in general as an aged look adds to the aesthetic of a post-apocalypse. And I get that, but for f**k's sake these look so nice you could eat off of them. Now this is an excellent mod and I would recommend this mod to anyone who wants more customization options in regards to their power armor or just wants to make the vanilla power armors look like they were perfectly preserved. I rate this mod that one guy who always has a great idea that makes zero sense. Guys, stop me if I'm getting crazy here, but like what if we made peanut butter sandwiches out of marshmallows, right? Because people love peanut butter, okay? You with me? You with me? Okay? But they also love marshmallows. So we put them together, BAM! Peanut butter marshmallows. This mod is one of those functionality mods that's just for true sickos. I mean, this gives you the ability, nay the delight, of shooting off enemies' limbs in the game, crippling them, and making them absolutely f***ing defenseless to fight back. Oh yeah, 
In the vanilla game, when you shoot the enemy's limbs for long enough, you can cripple them, making them kind of limp or crawl around. But with this mod installed, when you cripple their limbs, there's actually a chance you can shoot that f***er right off. And then they got no f***ing chance. Not at all. Fallout already has a large degree of gore and realism set into its vanilla files. This mod just goes a step further and finishes the application of that. Because sometimes, let's face it, a quick death is just too good for your enemies. You want to just wound them so they can't run away, and then you want to run up behind them and f*** them. I mean, uh, question them. There are six different settings for this mod depending on how they are ordered in your load order depends on which one is actually taking effect. The settings are regular, brutal, insano, mental, postal, and mind-blowing. So apparently they're all named after my ex-girlfriends. Ha ha ha, I'm just kidding, I never had a girlfriend. Each setting has an increasingly higher chance of mutilating your enemy, regular being the least likely to mutilate them, and mind-blowing the most likely to mutilate them. I rate this mod 11 guys who don't understand how gravity works. I would shit my pants that high up in the air. That's no joke. While this is interesting, it appears we're able to blow your character up like he started eating strange pills at Dwayne Johnson's house. I think it's safe to say with this mod installed, your boy hits the weights at least eight days a week. The breasts, the back, the shoulders, and most importantly, the buns have all been optimized for crime fighting efficiency. Now, if you want to be a superhero, you need tight buns. It's in the handbook. This mod aims to be the male equivalent of the CBBE mod. There's just so much going on here with this character. I mean, he looks like Arnold back in the day when he was obsessed with helicopters. Now, if you do have the body slide installed as well, then you can choose from some presets to really mold your character to that particular superhero vibe you're going for. There's a Batman preset, which is really muscular and almost has a comic book design to it. Nightwing, which is leaner, but also has that comic book waist-to-shoulder ratio. Then there's Deadpool, which is based off the video game character model, so that will likely be your best choice. And then there's also some Kurt option, but I honestly stopped reading after I got to Deadpool. The vanilla version that you see here is the preset, but if you do want to change it up, then you just have to download Body Slide and either select a preset <coughs> Deadpool, or change him up however you want him to look. I mean, just look at this guy mow down lesser men with his massively masculine steroid-induced manpower. It's almost upsetting to watch, but I'm pot committed now. I just cannot look away. I rate this mod one photo of my favorite X-Man. It would appear we may have frightened the he Jackman in his natural habitat. Horror films frequently glorify insane antagonists, with characteristics and behavior that is not only bizarre, but stands out in your mind and leaves a lasting impression. Like, oh goodness, how did they not know he was wearing that guy's face? Well, in order to create a truly horrific or scary environment, there must be a bombardment of unusual items littered throughout the environment to emphasize a severely disordered state of mind. That is both extremely unreasonable and impulsively unpredictable. These mannequins embody that delusion and state of mind in a way that would put anyone on edge. Oh my fucking god! With this mod installed, all the mannequins in the game will be replaced with these abnormal, emotionally abused manifestations you see here. These mannequins are insanely disturbing to look at, and would likely scare most people if they showed up unannounced. However, because of my calm demeanor, I'm immune to their frightening disposition. Let's keep it together, baiters. Let's keep it together. Just remember your training. Breathe. Just keep it together. Relax. Just remember your training. Nothing to be afraid of here, man. Keep it together. Keep it together. Oh, God! Please don't kill me! Oh, God, I got kids, man. They ain't my kids, but I got them. Oh, you're not real. Whew. Oh, you're just, you're just a f***ing doll. Oh, you're just a stupid man-sized doll. I knew that. You're not scary, are you? Are you? Yes, I am. <laughs> These mannequins look like a serial killer's instruction manual and are sure to scare the tits off of anyone playing Fallout 4. What makes these mannequins truly disturbing is that they look a lot like a corpse that has been mutilated post-mortem to look a lot more happy and alive. Now the only thing scarier than dead bodies are dead bodies that have been mutilated to look like they're still alive. <laughs> no, no, Gary's not dead. See? 
He's happy. Say hi, Gary. Say hi to the people. Say hi. I said say hello to the people, Gary. Sorry about that. Sometimes he gets a little shy, you know? New people and all. <laughs> he's such a kidster. But he's fine. He's breathing and everything, you know. I rate this mod one monkey who likes to get spanked on the ass. Boy, those butt cheeks look abused. This mod adds a number of encounters based on your given level as well as when you obtain certain items in the game. For example, taking a high-tech weapon or rare item may cause some stalkers to come after you. New enemies will now seek you out and try to kill you and will be able to find you no matter where you are. They will even find ways into your settlements, which makes you actually feel like the AI have a mind of their own and are using their IQ and survival tactics to infiltrate undetected. For this mod to work, all you have to do is play as you normally would and eventually someone's going to come looking for you. Be warned though, this mod wasn't designed to be easy and the enemies you encounter will spawn at high levels even from a new game making starting a new game a truly horrific experience. Sometimes you'll just have to run away like a bitch, but they're not gonna give up, no, no. They will chase you down and they will fuck you, especially if they catch a glimpse of your tight, warm, delicious butt cheeks. Mm-mm, mm-mm, good. Yeah, they'll be after you because of those. See, this is why ghosts are so scary to people, okay? It's because they can get you anywhere at any time. They can just push their cloud-like bodies through walls and Honestly, normal ghosts, they really don't scare me even that much. Now, what really scares me is the ghost that comes up behind you when you're doing pottery at 2 in the morning and f***s up your pottery on purpose. What the hell, Swayze? Do I stick my dirty fingers in your pots? No. No, I do not. How am I supposed to eat my Count Chocula now? You know that normal bowls create more work for me because of my constant refills and my bad knees. How about next time you're building a Lego pirate ship for four hours, I come over and drop kick it right out the f***ing window. What do you think of that? Not so funny now, is it? Huh? The aim here is to be a realistic mod when your enemies can catch up to you and continue to pursue you even if you escape for the moment. The enemies here, they do not forget, and they are extremely relentless. Some of the new types of enemies that have been added are bandits, cannibals, maniacs, addicts, trackers, stalkers, hunter killers, titans, and even bosses. Each one of these characters matches up to their names with characteristics that are definitive to say the least. For instance, the trackers aren't the best fighters, but they're almost impossible to hide from. They can track you almost anywhere, whereas addicts use chems to buff out and attack you relentlessly. Very difficult to fend off. This is a really awesome mod that makes enemy encounters a more realistic, immersive, and even a terrifying experience. I rate this mod one kitty cat who thinks having big feet makes up for having a small penis. Sorry, what was that? Oh, I, th I thought you wanted to, to know the size of my confusingly large feet, so I just yelled it at you. Are you jealous of my, of my giant feet? Are you jelly? Ah, uh, miserable. I'm so miserable. Now this mod adds the ability to make lore-friendly homemade weapons in the game. A pistol, rifle, bolt-action rifle, revolver rifle, and machine gun have all been added. All the weapons can be modified at the weapons workbench. Now, if you want to use these weapons in-game, you can manufacture them at the chemistry workstation in the category PA Weapons. To create one of these weapons, you will need a pack of cigarettes, a pencil, yardstick, battered clipboard, a bottle of vodka, a shot glass, duct tape, fertilizer, and some wood. Yeah, that's a lot of useless shit. But useless shit is important when you're trying to put together something completely brand new, apparently. You guys ever try that? You ever try to build something yourself in real life? You know, design some makeshift contraption that MacGyvers some convenience in your day-to-day? -day? It's not that easy. Well, I tried to do it once, and it was nothing like the brochures. Long story short, there was duct tape and Fisher-Price glue everywhere. Also, I may have been too close to the glue because I ended up passing out, and when I woke up, I was in a communal shower covered in another man's tears. It was not a great Thursday night for me. In order to make attachments for these weapons, you will also need to find supplies around the world space. For instance, in order to make an optic, you're going to need a camera. Makes sense, right? Now, despite the fact that homemade weapons can be found, you have the opportunity to get legendary properties for them just by searching mailboxes and trash cans. In there, you'll be able to find magazines called Popular Mechanics. 
Each issue of this magazine includes a detail that gives a particular weapon a legendary property. These legendary modifications can be then added via the workbench and you'll have your post-apocalyptic weapons. It's just that easy. Speaking of the post-apocalypse, you guys think when the world ends and mutated war boys are murdering and pillaging a desolate wasteland for simple commodities, that people will still be outraged about a joke they didn't like? You know, sitting there like, Yeah, honey, I know the cannibals are about to boil us alive, but I still can't help but think Carl's a bad person because he joked about molesting people. I rate this mod one photo that completely sums up 2020. I'm the bird. Have you ever said to yourself, these power armors, they all look so generic and plain. I wish there was a mod out there that really made these armors look lived in. Like they've been to war for over a century and their owners used and cared for them like an extension of themselves, really adding their personality to the armor. If that's the type of super specific question you ask yourself while you're playing Fallout 4, then hold on to your balls because I'm about to blow your mind with this next mod. Now this mod adds 16 variations to each vanilla power armor in the game. These aren't just your ordinary paint jobs though. No, no. They are done with fastidious detail to the point where you can see every scratch. I mean, every mark has a history and the history of this armor is that it's been to hell and back and survived. Now the wear and tear looks incredible and really brings the armor to life in a way I've never really seen in a Fallout game before. Now the paint jobs are all standalone additions so they don't replace the vanilla textures in the game. There are 2K and 4K versions to choose from depending on how intense you want that eye f***ing to be. There are also three standalone variations of the jetpack to choose from as well. Now this is one of those mods that you think you can live without until you actually install it. Then you realize your life just wasn't complete until this mod was installed on your game. I rate this mod that moment you realize a giant peanut butter shaped Spider-Man is trying to get into your cab. I don't get paid enough for this. Fuck. Now this mod adds a couple very ominous looking attires and accessories to the game, including but not limited to a new witch's outfit and a Hannibal Lecter mask. Let me ask you this, what's more evil than a witch, right? I mean, they're always up to no good brewing up some evil concoction, some unsanitary stew or crusty apple designed to f*** Cinderella out of her glass slippers. Let's face it, they can't be trusted, which is why I stop accepting candy from old people. You can just never be too careful. This mod also adds the Hannibal Lecter mask as well, which was designed to stop an evil cannibal doctor from biting people in the face when they were transporting them between facilities. Needless to say, Dr. Lecter might have missed that day in med school when they promised to do no harm, you know, sign that Hippocratic Oath and whatnot. Chances are he missed that day because he was preoccupied with doing evil shit like punching baby sea lions or something because he's a super psycho freak. And this mask fully encompasses that evil and psycho freakness. Now the mod authors did an awesome job adding these items to the game. So if you want to role play as a creepy witch or a twisted doctor, then you'll be able to do so in the most immersive way with custom clothing that fits in just great. Now this is a great mod that's sure to get you all worked up when October rolls around. However, the mod authors did such a wonderful job on the meshes and textures and design of these items that they'll improve any game that they're part of. The witch's outfit and the lecter mask both look amazing and do a great job fitting into the world so that they can be worn even when you're not playing dress up. This mod also adds some craftable pumpkins to the workshop so you can Halloween the f out of your game. Now if you want to get your man mittens on either one of these armor mods then they can both be crafted at the chemistry station under utility. This is an excellent mod with excellent assets and a great addition to anyone's playthrough of Fallout 4. I rate this mod one dog who's really self-conscious about his receding hairline. No, this? No, that's that's all. That's all natural. That's all me. Yeah, that's natural. Thanks again for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, be sure to bitch slap that subscribe button like it's three weeks behind on your rent. <laughs> bitch! Where's the money, bitch? Where's the money? Where is it? Also, go ahead and hit that bell icon, too, because apparently YouTube thought there should be extra steps. Why not, right? I'd like to subscribe, but first I have to click this and this and do this. Oh, it needs an email. All right, and this. Okay, just tell me when he's uploading. Fuck. Once you do all that, if you're lucky, at the stroke of midnight, a tiny little average baiter's fairy might come and tickle your butthole. Now, I hope to see you all again next time, and remember to keep on average baiting, baby.